I want to put a quick disclaimer out there that all of the footage used in this breakdown belongs to the NRL. Go ahead and check out their socials for any match highlights and things of that nature. The footage being used in this breakdown is for research, review, and criticism purposes. Um, and once again, I'm going to run you guys through a few clips here to highlight Kalen Ponga's importance and his effectiveness uh, on the game of footy. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to play each clip for you at full speed, and then I'm going to rewind it and sort of break it down more in depth. So here's the first clip. Um, and the first play here is actually in his first game with Newcastle up against Manly. And it's a fairly simple play that we've probably seen quite a few times. Um, but there are a few subtle things that he does on this play that are really impactful. So let's just run this footage back right here. And you can see he gets some early ball from Pierce. Or it might have been Connor Watson, actually. No, it was Pierce. So he gets some ball from, from Pierce right here. Um, and one thing that Ponga tends to always do when he gets early ball is he holds the ball out in front of him with two hands. right? And what this does is it lets the defense know that he hasn't necessarily tucked the ball to run yet. He's still making a decision. So he could still easily throw a short ball right here or throw the ball out the back to a trailing high or hunt. Um, you can see Fitzgibbon's running a nice line there as well. So he has a few options on this play, but he's just reading the defense. Now he can see that Cherry Evans doesn't come across to help Sirenen at all. He has Sirenen beat for speed. So Pong gets the ball, uses this goose step, once he realizes that Cherry Evans is staying put on Fitzgibbon, then he tucks the ball and runs. And he beats Curtis Sirian for speed right there, gets to the line and scores his first try in Knight's colors. But once again, just holding the ball out there gives him the option of throwing it out the back or throwing it short. Um, and the defense knows this, so they can't necessarily commit to stopping Ponga because of his options. Once they've made their decision, he tucks it and runs. And this goose step is interesting. We're going to break this down a little more in depth um, later on in the video, but he tends to use his goose step whenever his team is in attacking position. And from this goose step, he can either pass the ball, run the ball himself, or step inside. So when he does sort of initiate that goose step, because of the acceleration advantage that he has on the majority of second rowers in the competition, um, they kind of freeze whenever he does this goose step. And then once he makes his decision, he's gone. And he scores a try. So a fantastic try there from Ponga. Um, and this was the following week. So I'm going to play this clip for you. And this was actually the following round up against the Raiders. Okay, and it's still a try. Very similar situation. So Ponga right here, again, almost identical. They're about 10 meters out from the line. He gets some early ball from Pierce. Holds the ball out in front of him with two hands. And goes into that goose step. Now this time, once again, he has the second rower who in this case is Soliola, he has him beat for pace right here after he uses this goose step. And unlike last week, the halfback, Sam Williams, recognizes that his second row has been beat. So he comes across to cover and then Ponga throws that short ball to Fitzgibbon and puts him over. Now in this instance, Elliot Whitehead is playing center right here. Um, and he, once he recognizes that they've been beat. He can't get across in time to make that tackle. He's out of position and it's a try. But the important thing to note here, and the next replay actually shows it a little better, um, but the important thing to note here is that Sam Williams comes across, and Sam Williams at this point, he only has eyes for Ponga, right? Ponga recognizes this and just makes a simple short ball, but his individual brilliance, his ability to get on the outside of the outside back, of the uh, back rower, rather, and force the halfback to come across opens that up for his second rower and creates that try-scoring opportunity. So, fantastic brilliance there from Ponga. And we'll bring this one back. This is sort of the third evolution, right? So, um, you have Ponga once again, isolates the back rower, uses that skip to get to his outside, ball out in front of him with two hands. Okay, now Ben Hunt, the halfback, has to come across to try to play cover defense, similar to how... Sam Williams did in the previous clip and you'd think that this would open up the short ball once again for Fitzgibbon but what Ponga reads so quickly and this is what makes him so dangerous how quickly he reads the game I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a bit clearer um, so Ben Hunt comes across you think this would open up the short ball for Fitzgibbon but look at Ewan Aiken Ewan Aiken turns inside there right Ponga sees this and throws the cutout ball 
It's just, it's fantastic. Ponga has such outstanding vision and he makes decisions so quickly. It's actually amazing um, sort of how, how well versed he is, how many skills he has, but also how quickly he sees the game. It's, it's pretty amazing. So again, right here, uses that skip, gets to the outside, draws in Hunt, realizes you and Aiken's covered up the short ball, so throws the cutout and finds Heimel Hunt right there. Now, this is more or less a very similar clip to what we've seen. Same sort of thing. This one um, doesn't really use that skip, but holds the ball out in front of him, has Josh Jackson beat for pace, have to play cover defense, opens up the short ball. Heimel Hunt, terrific line and Newcastle score. Now, in the previous clips that I've shown you, you've seen that it's pretty much a, a standard thing. Whenever he uses that skip to beat the second rower, um, the halfback comes across and it's Ponga's decision whether he sh throws the short ball or throws a cutout. In this situation, um, this is when the halfback doesn't come across. And this is a more recent example. This is from last week against the Roosters. So again, Angus Crichton sort of freezes when Ponga does this goose step and then gets beat for pace. And because Crichton's out of position, he has to try to arm grab, misses the tackle. And Brock Lamb actually does the right thing. He, he trusts his inside man to make the tackle, stays out for too long. And by the time he tries to come across, Pong is already gone. Such a strong ball runner. And he scores a try right there. So a fantastic try from Ponga. This shows it as well, very well. That there's so much space, you know, right there that if you don't cover... Ponga will, will run the ball. He's not scared to run the ball. Such a strong ball runner. But his passing game opens up his running game and vice versa. Because if you don't come across, he'll run and score as he did in this clip. But if you do come across, he has such outstanding vision that, um, you know, it's, it's fantastic. So now we're going to move on to this clip here. This is against the Bulldogs as well. Um, and what you've probably seen as a recurring theme throughout this video is that Ponga loves attacking to the outside. So he loves to use that goose step and either beat you for pace around the outside or throw that cutout ball. Um, and defenses do pick up on this, but in this situation, I'm going to play it at full speed and then we'll reverse it. This is why you can't run overs on Ponga. You can't overcommit to that outside lane because he will step you. And I think that in the players poll that was recently um, evaluated on nrl.com, the players voted that Ponga has the best step in the competition. And this is why. So watch Ki watch uh, Kieran Foran here. So Ponga uses this goose step and watch Kieran Foran's footwork right there. You can see how hard he's trying to stay on the outside of Ponga. Ponga realizes this. Once again, look at, look at Kieran Foran. He's trying so hard to run overs here. Ponga realizes that and just steps him, gets all of his momentum going to the outside and then just bounces off that right foot and goes straight through for an easy try. And the replay actually shows it a little bit better. So right here, Ponga has all of Foran's momentum going le um, to the outside. Right there you can see. Once he uses that goose step, Kieran Foran's all the way running overs. And then Ponga uses that step to get inside. So fantastic. He had him on ice right there. Um, beautiful step. Now this is sort of a less fancy play. I'd say it's not... You don't look at this play and think, wow, Ponga's a freak, but it's relevant to state of origin. So one thing that's so dangerous about Queensland this year is that on their left edge, they have Cameron Munster, Kalen Ponga, Michael Morgan, and Corey Oates. So it's a very potent left edge. Um, and one thing that Ponga does really well sometimes is he recognizes when his team has the overlap and will just make the simple play. He doesn't try to do too much. So I'll run through this at full speed. It's a try scoring opportunity that isn't scored. I think uh, Connor Watson drops that ball, but it's not relevant because it's more the setup and what Ponga does here. So Ponga, once again, um, he gets the early ball. And you can see, if you watch Soliola on this play, he's sort of out of position, right? Because if you just look at this, it's sort of a... You've got a three on three here, but then you have Nathan Ross on the outside. So it's really a four on three for Newcastle, and look at Soliola. Soliola is busting it to try to get back there, right? Because he's out of position, so he's sprinting across the field trying to cover. Now, Sam Williams does have to come in here because obviously Soliola's out of position, and Sam Williams has to put a body in front of Kalen Ponga 
Elliot Whitehead has come across to put a body in front of Fitzgibbon to take away the short ball. And instead of trying to throw, you know, a, a cutout ball right at the line and try to put Nathan Ross away or anything like that, Ponga just makes a simple play. He simply gives his center some early ball, pass leads him to the outside, which gives him sort of a two-on-one with Rapina, Tau Tau Moga, and then he's able to make the simple draw and pass and create a line break. So again, the, I can see this happening for Queensland. Ponga just giving some early ball to his outside backs if they've got an overlap and letting them make the decision. And I like that. I mean, it's a very simple play. It's not a freakish play. A lot of players could make that for sure um, and make that decision. But it's more the fact that sometimes when you see an outstanding young player, um, they want to do it all themselves and they want to try to throw the miracle cutout ball every time. Ponga doesn't there. He just makes a simple, correct play and it results in a try-scoring opportunity for Newcastle. Now, this one I found interesting. So this was against the Dragons. Um, and it looks fairly simple, but it's interesting to see how the defense reacted to Pongahi as he caught the ball. So if I run it back, what I want you to look at is the fact that, number one, there's a ton of space here in the middle of the field. There's a ton of space right there. But I want you to look at um, Frizzell, and I believe that's that could be Lomax. I want you to look at their footwork here when Ponga gets the ball. So when Ponga gets the ball... We've seen how Ponga loves to skip to the outside and either run it himself or throw the ball to one of his um, outside backs. So as soon as he gets the ball on the short side here, you can see Lomax and Frizzell, they're sort of pedaling to the outside, right? They're almost trying to make sure that they don't give up an overlap. But what they don't realize or that, you know, they realize too late is that there's too much space in the middle of the field. But Ponga sees this and Ponga just plays what's in front of him. So he gets the ball here on the short side. They're desperate not to give up the overlap by trailing to the outside. You can see their footwork, they're backpedaling to the outside. And Ponga realizes there's so much space in the middle, so he just attacks it. And then by the time Frizzell sort of turns inside, Ponga's already got a head of steam and he's gone. And it's a fantastic run right there by Ponga. Again, here, same sort of thing. So Pong gets the ball. Frizzell bites on the decoy run right there. And then by the time he realizes it's gone out the back, Ponga's got a head of steam, has him burnt. Ben Hunt's sort of trying to stand his ground to make sure he doesn't come in and give the the uh, overlap to Newcastle, and there's a ton of space in the middle. Ponga runs through and scores. Same sort of thing. Ponga's just playing what's in front of him. He's getting better at that. Of course, he's got the goose step, he's got the cutout ball, he's got the step inside, he's got so many weapons in his arsenal, but he can play what's in front of him so well, again, which is such a tremendous asset. Um, and this is the final sort of thing that I think Pong is really getting better at, and that's his danger off the ball. So from what I've shown you in the opening sort of stances of this video, you've seen there are quite a few clips where Ponga has the ball in his hands, and he's extremely dangerous, right? But in this clip right here, um, Ponga is showing how dangerous he can be off the ball by running lines and his support play. So again, right here, he just runs a fantastic line inside piece um, and gets some some good ball right there and, and scores. And what's crazy about this try is that he actually beats Tuivasashek um, yeah, for pace, which I find outstanding because Tuivasashek is very a very quick player, very elusive, um, but right there he just gets torched by Kalen Ponger. And this is a similar thing as well. Just support play, just danger off the ball. We know how dangerous he is with the ball in his hands, but his play off the ball is improving, and it's such a threat. Even in this one, look at this. So when Levi takes off here, and he kind of breaks through the line, Pong is about eight meters behind him, and Pong just busts his ass to get into this play and, and get into support, and he's rewarded for it with a nice ball from Levi, and he gets four points. Like That's just an effort play. He wasn't trying to set up the play after this and staying back trying to organize. He was just sort of playing what was in front of him. He saw that Levi um, had made the break and he just rushed up in support and ensured they got four points out of it. And this is the final play of the uh, of the video that I want to break down. And this is just what I think is, is so dangerous about Ponga. I mean, from the opening clips, you might think he's more suited as a half because a lot of the things that he does, um, you could see from a 5 8 but... You know, it's not necessarily that. It's the fact that he also is fantastic as a runner of the football, returning the ball against a broken defensive line. 
So yes, he can sort of pick his spots and come into first receiver and make some plays on the short side, as we've seen, but he can also go ahead um, and get some some ball on a kick return and against a, a sort of a broken defensive line, make a couple of people miss and then use his speed to create try-scoring opportunities, which is what I think is so dangerous about him. So look, I think that this year um, it's going to be a very good year for Queensland with the likes of Ponga and Munster. And I think that from what we've seen in this clip, his individual brilliance alone is going to create plenty of try scoring opportunities. If you throw in Munster's ability as well, I, I think it's going to be a very tough um, defensive assignment for New South Wales, but it'll be interesting to see whether they can coexist and sort of how they play off each other because they're two sim- they're, they're similar kind of players, right? They play what's in front of them. Um, they like to take on short sides and they're very good. So me personally, I think this is uh, fantastic footage from Ponga. I hope I've broken down a few things that you can recognize when he's playing next. Um, and it's pretty amazing how he has a similar setup for so many different things, whether he's throwing a cutout ball, running the ball himself or stepping you inside. He seems to always use that two-handed carry and that goose step um, to keep the defense off guard and reads the game so quickly and, and scores off the back of it. So that's um, the end of this video, I suppose. We're going to break down some more players in the near future. If you enjoyed this one, go ahead and leave the video a like and press subscribe. Um, we're going to be bringing you guys plenty of more content in the near future. But once again, this was a home ground advantage. Thank you for checking in and we'll be back soon. Have a great day. See you later.